Have you found yourself moving too late to take a shot in badminton? Don't worry. There are some ways you can still return it even when you think you're in an awkward position to do so. Hi, I'm Coach Kenya Sunshon and I've been a professional badminton coach for many years. If you're new here, this channel is all about helping you improve your badminton game. I make videos on different aspects of badminton, from executing shots well to having a good mindset when playing. No matter how good we have become at playing badminton, we still find ourselves a little late in returning a shot. It's such a fast sport that this is difficult to avoid totally. In this video, I'll show you some ways to respond when you are in this challenging position. It is ideal to always take the shots as high as you can, as close as you can, but what happens when you are late? So we have to tackle what we can do when we are late on specific shots, especially at the back. When we don't have time to move this way, all we have to do is to turn around, run to the area, and make a big swing. Same with the backhand side. You have to immediately switch to that area, run until you get close to the shuttle, and swing your racket. Now, I would like to stress that you have to go closer to the shuttle. For example, you are already late, and you are trying lessen the steps by taking it as far as you can. This will not be very effective. You're already late and you're not comfortable in hitting with an overstretched leg and an overstretched arm. So even if you're late, you still have to do your best to go closer so that you can swing. Even if you're swinging underhand, you will still have better strength and better control you will have more options and more variety in terms of return as opposed to being overstretched like this. See, I can't even hold my position well. And then how will I hit the shuttle? Of course, you'd like to go closer, hit, then immediately move back to your center. Same with the forehand side. You're already late. Try to go as close as you can to the shuttle. Be comfortable with the swing and you have different options. You can swing it all the way to the back, put it in front, or even swing it until the midcourt, depending on your opponent. This drill is done without a shuttle. You will see that we are very specific on doing one side, which is the forehand side. As I've explained um, earlier, there, there are ways to get to that shuttle even when you're late. You can either turn around and run for it or do a joint step, which you see on your screen. So um, even when practicing that drill, you're kind of like simulating that if it happens in the game, this is how you want to move. Of course, um, it may not be exactly the same because sometimes you come from a different angle or a different area of the court. So now you see the backhand side of it. I want to go specific on one side first before actually putting shuttles with it or maybe making the drill a little harder. So always start with one side and specific side so, so that you can actually practice the footwork, the movement, how close you will get to the shuttle. So now you see that we are using um, shuttles for this underhand late you know, forehand shot. So you will notice that the swing is bigger because when it happens in the game, you're late, you know you have to exert an extra effort to get the shot you want. And normally, when we're late, our opponents are trying to go forward already and waiting for our shot. So as much as possible, we want to try and drive it. We want to try and, you know, push it to the back. So that's our goal backhand might be a little harder to some but it's good to keep on practicing it again practice with shuttle on one side first in that way you get accustomed to it and then you can actually move around the whole court and get back to that same spot
So this time, you will see that we are doing both sides. Okay, sometimes you've already hit one side, you're running back in, and suddenly the shot goes on to the other side. So when you're doing certain drills, you try to visualize, you try to picture when it happens in the game, when it happens as you play. As much as possible, you want a good control on your racket hand. You are also trying not to have your body go really low. So as much as possible, your body is up the whole time. You will notice that most of the time that the players are in a low position, in a more squatting position. Because if you're in a squatting position, you can move better as opposed to coming from a standing position. So when you run to the corners of the court, make sure that your arms are not overstretched. If it's overstretched, your shot will be weak. The quality of return won't be as good. That's why I don't like it overstretched. Even when we're late in getting these shots, do your best to get closer to the shuttle as you hit slightly bend your elbow and then do your best to be close to the shuttle. Sort of like facing the shuttle. So you can either run to that area or do a joint step. There are many different return shots that you will make. It depends on where your opponent is standing. But most of the time, when you're late, you know you're late, you know your opponent is you know, trying to go forward and waiting for a short return from you, you want to try and strengthen that shot and push it to the back. So this time, you see that we are doing two points, one from the other side, opposite side. And we're practicing the underhand from the back. So it gives it a little more, you know, um, real feeling of actually being in the game. Like in many, um, many shots, it is important that our arms are relaxed as we hit the shuttle. Do not tense up. Do not harden the grip. One way to avoid being late for a shot is to work on improving your speed on the court. The video on your screen will help you move faster during game. Catch my next video so you can level up your game and be the next smashing success.